the damage to your car. You're an idiot. Judgment on the counterclaim, $5,000. Now, I'm not going to say that all women are evil, but we've seen our fair share on this show. So let's hop into this one and check out what this lady's up to. Now, we all know that carelessness is the surest path to everything bad in our world, and it's unfortunate that the majority of us have that particular flaw. Granted, some are mistakes and some are acts of foolishness, like this woman who let her 14-year-old child drive a car. 14-year-old son drives the car, he says. Only on the property. I don't care if he drives on the property, if he drives it on Pluto. He's not permitted to be behind the wheel of a car. Your daughter killed instantly in the car. I have the police report if you like to read it. It's really unfortunate that she doesn't seem to be taking it seriously. Girl died because of her careless actions, and funny enough, she's the plaintiff. What sort of case is this? Just asking. What difference does it make? I mean, do you honestly believe that you have a case? Do you honestly believe that any fact finder, whether it be a judge, sympathetic, Miss Moore? I never get Her stance is that she didn't give him permission to drive the car. I don't know what planet she lives on, but she should know that as long as the car's in her name, she's responsible. Gave her permission to drive the car. No, that's not what you just said. You said I never gave him permission to drive off the property. I never gave her permission to drive the car. Period. You don't have to. You gave them the method. You gave them a car. The worst part about this is that she sues the woman for the damage to her car. She should be counting the blessings that she or her son are not held in custody for vehicular manslaughter. This is just absolutely disgusting. And I have my son who looks very healthy to me. Is that just a second? I say who looks very healthy to me. Other than that, I would turn to her. The defendant, Naomi, moves in with Mr. Charles 12 hours after meeting him online, and now he's accusing her of stealing. You don't say. I was not working at the time, Your Honor. Um, in Burlington, in a mobile home with my grandmother. So you were living with your grandma the last time you were employed on a full-time basis? In 2014. How have you supported yourself since? Um, I... The case isn't looking good for her. Before she met the plaintiff, she was unemployed, broke, and she was living with her grandmother. She's got the credentials already. All they need is her attitude to confirm if she actually did steal. Timeless adage that always holds true, desperate people do desperate things. When did you meet the plaintiff? In August of 2016. Sorry, Aaron. And you met him online. When did you meet him in person? Date? 12 hours later. When you met him 12 hours. She met him online and 12 hours later, they decided to meet up. That just screams desperation. Worse yet, she started living with him immediately. I got a double wide, ma'am. How long have you lived there? A year, a little bit over a year now. Do you own it or rent it? This guy actually did allow this all to happen. He did all that he did quite consciously. He definitely knew what he was doing. Or he's either too apathetic or he's a pushover. Or maybe she's just a really good manipulator. But funny enough, <laughs> that's not the end. Because after a few months, her friend also moved in. Moved in with us. Is that you? Did she ask you if her friend could move in? Yes, ma'am. You said okay? Yes, ma'am. Why? Because she was going to help pay the bills. Did she help pay the bills? Yes, ma'am. You received some sort of a settlement. Yes, ma'am. The plaintiff is disabled. Well, it's all starting to make sense now. He needed the help because he couldn't work and he was denied his license for so long. His family supported him and he worked odd jobs on the side. Now, we're talking, yes, now we're talking better. Yes. Now we're talking what I understand. Yes, ma'am. I'll do a little bit of mowing, landscaping. Lawn mowing, landscaping, yeah. paid in cash. Yes, ma'am. The government eventually granted him the license after he sued him and he got $44,000 back. Well, before all that, he moved the defendant into his home and eventually bought himself a mobile home and they moved there. But Judge Judy couldn't let go of the fact that he could have scammed a lot of people. He won a workman's comp case and that was how he bought his mobile home. Got it in June of 2016. How much? 119000 just want to know, you didn't tell any of these people that you were doing landscaping over the last three and a half years. Well, Judge Judy finally gets the facts that she needs to go into the case. It turns out the defendant had racked up $7,000 of his money based on the things she bought. Well, that kind of case is nuanced. Credit, because I assume she used a credit card. When I was asleep, she had got my debit card out of my wallet. And I got a witness, my son, Matthew McGuire. Not interested in your son, Matthew McGuire. So you had a debit card. 
You come to find out, he's had the debit card for years, and based on the fact that he didn't use it as much, he didn't care to check the bills every month. And that's how she got away with it for so long. She said to me, she got my debit card, and after she moved out, she started to make charges on my debit card. I'm listening. Did she make any charges on your debit card, Mr. McGuire, after she moved out? No, ma'am. So they were all made while you were together. If you need confirmation that it's a strange world we live in, here's one. The defense has a counterclaim. She claims that when they kicked her out of the house, she couldn't take anything, and she couldn't go back there because there was a restraining order against her. No big surprise there. So now she's suing him. <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, do me a favor. Rate how absolutely ridiculous that sounds in the comments below. Trips to go how get much, mine. How much rent did you pay him while you were there? None, Your Honor. 46 years old? Is that what you told me before? Yes, ma'am. Get a job. Time to have a job. I'm disabled, Your Honor. Just a second. I, but I don't do side jobs. Just a second. You're di it's sad that he didn't take note of his bills and it escalated to such a great amount and it's sad he can't get it back from her. She's a 46-year-old jobless and allegedly disabled woman. She was receiving a check while she was living with him in his home without paying rent. To me, at least for a year and a half, probably a lot longer, you were getting your own disability because you're disabled and you were getting money to take care of your disabled grandmother. Goodbye. Pardon our excuse, you may step out. Well, this one promises to be juicy. Good old Tina bailed Jacob out of jail and even bought him a car. They've known each other for years. She was raised in the same neighborhood with his father and uncle, and they're like her brothers. At some point, he wasn't doing so hot, so she invited him to her house. I had a very nice house, and I was living alone. I, I did not need Mrs. Mullins' residence. So what did you go there for? Why I went to Mrs. Mullins' house is because I went to jail um, back in December of 2015. Well, potato, potato. At some point, he did go to live with her, but she and his dad had made an agreement with them that he's going to pay her back for the bail. You left your very nice house where you were living by yourself and moved in with her? Mrs. Mullins said that it would be easier for me to pay her the bail back if I moved in with her. No, Your Honor. Was it easier? Mm, no. Okay. He's currently living with his mama because he's recently fallen on hard times. He worked as a direct care official and he'd received a new offer to work elsewhere and he went for it. Unfortunately, as these things go, it wasn't what he thought it was and he ended up unemployed for a while. And currently, he's working as a janitor. I'm no. When you lived with Mrs. Mullins for the year, who were you working for? I worked for um, Flat, Flat Rock Manor. Look at me. Told me something that turned out to be, and I asked you who you worked for. While he was with the plaintiff, he was still working in the care institute and he was also working two jobs at the same time. At one time, three. And were you giving Miss Mullins... I was just contributing with the bills to my under... How much money... The whole check was being deposited in Miss Mullins' bank account. Your whole check from the nursing facility? Okay, now this case is taking a turn. And it's not looking good for the plaintiff. She was receiving his checks in her account, and she's the one suing him. Oh, crazy. 13 times of the proof that I have. How many times, Miss Mullins? And don't look at a spreadsheet that you prepared for this. How many times were his checks deposited in your bank? I would he agree with 13 times. She's received his money and removed the bills. She bought him a car, which cost $3,200. Well, there's a lot of things that went into that. They had an argument, and he left. Did he take the car with him? No, I wouldn't allow him to do that. Why not? Well, at the particular time, it was in my name. We did originally, when we first purchased the car, it went right <laughs> into his name, but it ultimately went back into my name. Why? She bought him the car and put it in his name, but because he still owed her for it, she went to charge it. Uh, that sounds pretty odd. So he'd been using it for a whole year, and when they had the argument, she didn't let him leave with it. I gotta say, that's kind of petty. So what's she suing for then? When we first purchased the car for him, we had to put like $1,500 of car repairs in to even get him you have safely the car. You drive. have the car. Right. Hear more about this, mm -hmm. but you... Right, and I took it back to sell it, and I told him whatever... No, 
Well, that solves it. She took the car back from him, so she shouldn't have brought that matter into the case at all. But it seems like she has more interesting details about their transactional relationship. Let me hear. There was a, one collection agency place. It was an apartment he got evicted from. His cousin lived there, and he was being sued for $1,433 and with some extra fees that told She paid the bills for him, but she doesn't seem to have the evidence to prove that she did. Seriously, what's wrong with these plaintiffs? They almost never have the necessary necessary information to prove their case. Right, I don't have the statements. Okay. I had well, to request it. You have a hold? I do. There. I do. But you don't have Show me No, I have evidence. It. I have What's evidence. Next? The next collection agency would be Sprint. He owed Sprint bill. She also paid his Sprint bill and he doesn't feel like he owes her for it. Well, finally, she's got the details for the transaction. That he had an outstanding Sprint telephone. It was a letter that says this letter will tell you that your account with Sprint has been settled. You and wrote here, Tina, that would be you. Her problem is that she doesn't have the details to support her claims. He might owe it all, but she doesn't have the evidence to prove it. Were two documents from a bank that describe two different transactions that total, a, and the bank describes it from medical services. I'm not sure why the bank I'm not sure like that, I'm but not I so she spends the next few minutes in a back and forth with Judge Judy about how she paid the bills with two different credit cards and how the transaction lines are different. Well, Judge Judy sees through it all and deems it irrelevant. It was $1,448. I'm not crazy. I'm going to return this thing to you and I'm going to dismiss your case because I'm not getting involved. Creating your proof. You showed me state for somebody. Well, we're now getting to the most interesting part. All his paychecks that she received summed up to $12,000. That's a lot of money, and honestly, it should have summed up any bill that he owed him. $12,071? And I loaned him $15,770. Because then that was the car. You have the car back. So right. he owes you nothing. Your and, case is dismissed. Well, I credit, We're done. Can I show you where I credited We're him? Done. This woman is definitely delusional. He gave her $12,000 and she held his paychecks back. She still wants more from him after all that she's taken from him. And I gotta say, that's just evil. I took care of this man front free for a year. I fed him, took care of him, and paid his bills, and he promised to pay me back. He's our student, and he stepped out. I helped this young man out for an entire year. I loved him. Like